One thing uh, with the scientists, uh, the newspapers, <clears throat> they co- and the court documents call him the professor. Mm-hmm. But in the streets, we know him as the scientist. For we, we call him for Oka. Yeah, for Oka no, no. literally translates to the, the scientist. Yes. So probably somebody, I mean, maybe the cops or whoever wanted to get that name translated what for Oka means. And you know, back then, mm. they didn't have many uh, Chinese cops no. to translate. So they probably pulled somebody off the streets and. I mean, yeah, there's a, back to, in the uh, days, professor. in the 80s, right? If you notice, everything is politics. Mm-hmm. For a period of time, even the police didn't want to acknowledge there were gangs in Chinatown. Why? There used to be like freaking five, six, seven, eight tour buses on Bowery Street. There was money. There were tourists coming down. You know what I mean? And and for the longest, and one of the things about us, our so-called violence, we did it to each other. Basically, what I mean was this. We didn't go out there just to start trouble with anybody. We didn't go out there to rob people or whatever. Whatever we did, it was either with fighting the ghost shadows, the Dong Hong, the white tigers, whatever. It was all internal amongst ourselves. So one, so before, because of this, I, I think the authorities for the longest really didn't come down on us, right? It didn't affect their white America lifestyle. But later on, it did. It was after we changed regimes and we started getting into drug distribution. Mm -hmm. And then we were making some serious money. So that changed the whole game. Could you uh, shed some light on Michael Chen, also known as the scientist? What kind of personality did he have? Well, well, understand this. My interactions with him at that time, I was young. Mm -hmm. I'm a soldier. Mm-hmm. I'm not a decision maker, mm-hmm. right? But he is very reserved, control. Everything he do is thought out. Uh, only time we see him was on Peltry. There was a little coffee shop called King Sun. It was open 24 hours. Next to it was a gambling house called Gaoho. These were like Chinatown institutions back then. Mm-hmm. So he will hold court. Everyone not one, every so often he will show up in the coffee shop, and when he does, it's a very serious atmosphere. There's no joking around. Nobody talks. That's the kind of control and respect he had amongst us. Mm-hmm. If he say jump, we jump. If he say kill, we mm-hmm. kill. Right? That's how controlling. I mean, I remember he would read military strategy books. So he would think out how to run this gang, organization, company, whatever you like to call it, right? And what differentiates agencies, like for instance, uh, a, a prison guard, a police officer, a FBI, a secret service, the level of training you undergo. We went through training. He would make us go through gun training and sh- close combat training, meaning this, we would have a, let's say, unloaded gun, we would put it in our waste bag, we look at the mirror, and every day, fast draw, fast draw, 50 times, everything. For instance, if you're wearing a shirt, your teacher take your thumb, push your shirt back, up, draw, up. You do this 50 times, why? So in the street, you have training. You understand what I'm talking about? Because otherwise, you know what to do. So everything becomes second hand to us. Same thing. That the concept goes, if you're going to be a plumber, you better know how to use a wrench. Mm-hmm. If you're going to be a gangster, you better know how to fight and use a gun. So all these little things we were trained and taught. Every, every full-fledged member mm-hmm. were taught this. For this reason why, I would say, the Flying Dragons was one of the most Discipline, gangs, if not the, in Chinatown. We did not allow girls to go to our apartments. Why? Because he knew. Girls and girlfriends are the ones that see everything around you. And they talk the most. So there's a lot of rules. A lot of rules on the streets that we abide by. And we respected those rules because why? We saw these rules in force. The highest severity of the rules... The penalty is death. And as I say, we saw these rules in force. What that happens is this, that then you respect the rules. Let me say this about uh, the regime of scientists, right? 
he's a righteous person. Because mm-hmm. when we came out, like for instance, they, 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 when I was doing the probation period, right, my, uh, my dai, dai tao, because every group have a little head, like mm-hmm. a like platoon leader, how you mm-hmm. put it in English, whatever, right? Dai ma. Dai ma, in that sense, yes, you know what I mean? Mine was uh, by a person named of La. <laughs> you don't mind me mentioning your name, right? Uh, he was the one leading me, of course, but we were taught that the reason why we exist is protect the Chinese people in Chinatown. We do not let any other races come here and bully us. I mean, as you see now in China, robberies, like all this stuff, people getting by, by the home, whatever, that did not exist back in the 80s. I mean, in a very ironic way, right? No, the, the thing is this, nobody can come down Chinatown and extort anyone or fuck with anyone but us. <laughs> Only we can do it to ourselves, but is it like then? Back then in the days, if it's after 9 p.m. at night and you're not Chinese and you're under 25, you're getting an ass whooping. They, they know it for real. Why? Because you're up to no good. Mm-hmm. The tutelage, if you're, if at after 9 p.m. at night, there's no reason why you're going to be in China. This was in the 80s, you understand? Mm-hmm. So we know. So we don't ask. We just go up there and we fuck you up. There's been a lot of serious fights back in the days. And it doesn't matter if they're innocent or not. You're not. You guys not taking any chances. No. Chinese saying, "You know what I mean? You rather is the point of that. See, the point of that exercise once again yes, was uh, this. Let's translate that. You know what I mean? Meaning, how would that be in English? Even if you kill someone who's innocent, at it, least it it gets the job done. It gets the job. The job done, done is to send out the word. Yeah. Do not come to Chinatown and fuck around. There are people there watching it. And th- that was the way it was. People knew, do not come to Chinatown to fuck around. I remember no. those days, that message yeah. was uh, clearly sent. Clear and loud. There was a lot of fights. I could go on and on. There was fights where people with machetes, we were fights where there used to be a thing called ninja. It was a piece of metal with two things going this way. They'll come down very tough thinking they were one person. What they don't realize is all around, they're surrounded. Oh, listen, there were some major ass whoopings we gave people who were screaming, begging for their lives. So the point is, when they get their ass beat, they go back to the hood and they're going to tell them. And the people are going to know, don't go down there. You're going to get an ass whooping. Well, that was for the sake of keeping Chinatown safe. And it was. Mm-hmm. For a period of time, it really was. There was no drug dealing back then. No drug dealing. You can't, and he has a whole, there was a whole bunch of rules. All of them built on a righteous platform. Example, if we're brothers, I can't, cannot, I must respect your family, your sisters, your wives, your girlfriends. I cannot go out with your girlfriends, your wives, or whatever. The penalty is death. Uh, you can't drug dealing, mm-hmm. right? That is another penalty. And you also must listen and respect your elders, right? So all these rules he had really had a very righteous foundation mm-hmm. which now it, it it gives us strength we 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 are not we are not allowed to harm civilians as he would call it civil and we're not allowed to harm elderly or women or children that was ingrained in us you know i i'll, I'll share a story cuz growing up you no know, teenagers we no teenagers we have no sense of in a sense morals that's taught to us I remember one time as a kid, I looked to my elder, right? There were some girls coming down and I want to them, teach them lessons. So I said to my elder, I think I was like 15. I said, listen, I said, I want to take them to the basement and let's freaking rape them, right? Mm-hmm. Not knowing better. You know what he said to me? Mm-hmm. You do that. Mm-hmm. We're going to cut your dick off, mm-hmm. beat you up and throw you off the street. Mm-hmm. I look at him and I said, huh? See, when you're young, you need fear mm-hmm. to make you realize that. But then he said to me this, don't you have a mother? Mm-hmm. Don't you have a sister? What if somebody raped your mother and your sister? Mm-hmm. That taught me morals, mm-hmm. which I later taught my underlings. Mm-hmm. See, that's how one generation to another. For this reason, that's why the flying dragons, right? The members believe in their cause. Mm-hmm. Cause we are not just gangsters in the street. Mm-hmm. We certain sense of morals was instilled in us mm-hmm. as as when we were young, 
And that part was positive. It really was positive. It taught me to respect my parents. Because I ran away from home when I was 14 too. But later on, being in the street after a year, I learned to, during Chinese New Year, bring food back to the family. Because it instilled a sense of respect for your elders into me. Mm. So let me get this straight. So the Flying Dragons was formed to protect the community. And so you guys, in the beginning, when the scientists formed the Flying Dragons, um, that, that goes under, really good. Under like a righteous, you know. Uh, I'll be honest way. with you. So there's really no money to be made in the early days. It's there is no money. There was it, no extortion, there, nothing no. like that. So it was all. Now, the forming of the Flying Dragon was prior to my time. It was in the late 60s. Mm -hmm. There was a couple of people, as I remember as the story goes, four to five people. They band up together, really, to protect themselves from the foreign, the Spanish, the blacks, because well, they were mm -hmm. first generation immigrants in the mm -hmm. 60s. Can you imagine how it was? So they band together so not to be picked on, okay? From there, it started to expand. Now, when it finally, and scientists and a couple of people, the first generation flying mm -hmm. dragons, all right? Uh, he wasn't actually the leader when the forming of it, but just say he one of the co-founding members. One of the co-founding yes, members. Yes, other members, probably has less than ambitious to be a leader. Mm -hmm. So they later on faded out, but the scientists stayed on. But what changed the makeup of our presence was when the FDs under scientist toolage hooked up with the tongs. Which hooked is up with Singh. Uncle Seven. Yes, hooked up with Hip Singh. That gave us the right of territory. Because honestly in Chinatown, while certain places were our territories, but they really belonged to the tongs. They were here before us. Mm -hmm. Hip Sing, On Leung, the two major towns, they, they are the ones that owns the territory. Mm -hmm. And we became the military arm of these associations back in the days. Mm -hmm. Th that's public information. You know, everybody knows that already.